This is the Creative Entrepreneur, Season Two, Episode One. Welcome to the Creative Entrepreneur. I am your host, Bob Baker. And on this episode, I will be sharing with you some tips on how to create a personal brand identity on the internet or online. But first, I want to give you a little update on what is happening with this podcast. Of course, I have no idea when you subscribed or how many episodes you've listened to up to this point. But just to give you a real quick history lesson to let you know where we are. I started The Creative Entrepreneur in June of 2013, and I launched it as an interview show. I was reaching out to some of the coolest and most creative people who were actually making a living and making a difference with their art, with their creativity, with their business, with their mission or message or whatever. And I did 30 of those interviews over about 11 months from June of 2013 up until near the end of May 2014. And it was a great run. I mean, I really enjoyed talking to these people. Some of them were friends, uh, that people that I already known. Others, though, were people I reached out to, people I admired or I discovered in my travels online and off. And I just wanted to pick their brains and share with you their secrets to success. And just to be clear, I call this show The Creative Entrepreneur because it generally focuses on people that are doing something in arts-related fields. So that'd be visual artists and musicians and authors and, you know, actors and different things like that. They don't have to be specifically, but they tend to be people in a creative field. Although the argument can be made that just about any field of endeavor is a creative field. Okay, cool. That brings us up to June of 2014, and that's when I did my first ever crowdfunding campaign. It was for a book called The Empowered Artist. I'm still working on that title as I record this. It should be out sometime in the early part of 2015. And I got the bright idea to promote this 30-day fan funding campaign by doing a daily video. And so I came up with this concept called 30 Ways to Become an Empowered Artist. And it was really awesome because I got to share, often for the first time, some of the rock-solid principles that have helped me and other creative people to build a business and to make a difference in the world and to make money, et cetera, et cetera. Of course, about 10 days into that, I'm going, oh my God, what was I thinking doing a daily video? There was a lot of work, uh, a lot of editing time and setting up lights and all that good stuff. But it was well worth it because I really enjoyed putting these together and people seemed to really resonate with the messages in them. And it ended up being like three and a half hours worth of content when you added up all 30 of those videos. So I extracted the audio and uh, made it part of the feed of this podcast. So that was 30 additional episodes. Now, after doing that for a month, I decided, man, I'm going to take a little break. I'm going to take a month or two off just to kind of chill and relax and catch my breath and gear up for the next season. Well, here, a number of months have gone by, and I haven't come back with any new interviews. If you've been eagerly awaiting the return of this podcast, I apologize for the delay, but I am back. I'm calling this season two. A lot of podcasts are doing that. They're going to take a cue, I guess, from TV and the seasons and all that good stuff. And so I guess you can consider season one of the Creative Entrepreneur to be the first 30 interviews that I did, which, by the way, you can still uh, watch and listen to at DIYCareerManifesto.com. Uh, yes, that's the name of a book that I published, but it's also the website where I house all of these interviews. And season one also included the 30 ways to become an empowered artist, the daily series of videos and audio podcasts. So I guess season one includes a total of 60 episodes. Well, I figured it was high time I come back and start giving you more inspiration through this podcast. So I'm calling it season two, and I'm going to mix things up. I do plan on continuing to do interviews, but I'm also going to do some standalone uh, spoken word inspirational messages for me. They may be excerpts from audiobooks that I've created. Maybe I'll read and riff on some of the blog posts that I've written, perhaps just riff on and share with you some great uh, tips that I've discovered through conversations or through articles that I've read or especially things that I have been able to benefit from from my own pursuit of being a full-time creative person. 
But even though I haven't posted any new episodes in a while, I just logged into my Libsyn account. That's the uh, service that I use to uh, host and publish these podcasts. Uh, but I was really pleased to see that still, like every month, 1,500 people downloaded episodes. And so it's great to know that the archives are still being enjoyed and consumed, but I want to start giving you some new, fresh, current content as well. In fact, if you're curious, I will share with you what the most popular interviews and episodes were from season one, but I'm going to do that after these tips on how to brand yourself online. There's a little tease there for you to stick around to the end. So back in 2001, uh, a book of mine was published called Branding Yourself Online, How to Use the Internet to Become a Celebrity or Expert in Your Field. And to be honest, um, as far as I know, it was really the first book that specifically covered personal branding. And I'm talking about branding yourself as an individual, not as a company or a corporation, but it was the first book that covered personal branding and how to do that using the Internet. It was very well received. But of course, many years have passed since then. The book has actually been out of print for a number of years. But even in recent years, people who discovered the book or pulled it off their bookshelves or whatever told me that, yeah, there was some outdated stuff in there as far as like website links and so on. But I heard repeatedly that the principles that I talked about, the branding tips and tactics that I discussed were still relevant today. They were quite timeless, in fact. So after I heard this enough, you know, I'm no dummy. I got the point. So I actually took some of the best principles and condensed it down into a relatively short ebook, also called Branding Yourself Online. And then a few months ago, I recorded an audiobook version of it, which is now available on Audible and Amazon and iTunes. So here on episode one of season two, I'm going to share with you one of the chapters from the Branding Yourself Online audiobook. I hope you enjoy this, and I'll talk to you on the other end. Lesson 5. Defining Your Brand Focus One of the key elements that propel successful brands and successful people is having a defined focus. After all, that's what a brand name does. It stands for something specific to a particular group of people you hope to transform into fans. Example. Nathan Sawaya is an artist, one of many thousands of artists who promote themselves on the internet. More specifically, Nathan is primarily a sculptor, but what sets him apart is what he uses to create his three-dimensional art pieces. His medium of choice? Lego bricks. That's right, he creates incredible works of art using Lego pieces as his building material. And that's what he's known for. Visit his website at brickartist.com to see for yourself. His work is on display at art museums, galleries, science centers, and libraries around the world. Nathan makes a good living selling commissioned pieces and Lego sculpture installations. The amazing thing is he left a career as an attorney to pursue this specific niche as an artist. He could have easily decided to be more generic with his identity and call his website Nathan's Art Site. But what is a Nathan's art site besides a site that has something to do with art and is maintained by a guy named Nathan? Instead, he uses the term brick artist and keeps his brand focused on Lego bricks as an art medium. Name recognition means nothing if the name isn't associated with something specific. Art is too broad a subject. Does it refer to abstract, still life, landscape, portrait, impressionistic, or what? But a Lego artist, that's something you can wrap your brain around and understand immediately. You need to supply your potential fans with a hook on which to hang your name. A photographer might become known for doing photos of old fire hydrants. A carpenter could specialize in making unusual birdhouses. A watercolor artist might get notoriety for her wildlife paintings. Regardless of what your general area of expertise is, you must focus on a particular slice of the pie and make certain your name is attached to it. Think of this concept as nitro, your name, and glycerin, your specialty. Either ingredient alone is powerless. Put them together and you have an explosive combination. Who is Harold Fernberger? Imagine that you suddenly develop an interest in left-handed bowlers. Not knowing where to turn for more information, you head to your favorite search engine and type in the keywords left-handed and bowler. 
After looking through a few uninformative links, you come across the name Harold Fernberger. One click later, and you're at Harold's site looking over a cornucopia of articles, photo galleries, blog posts, video clips, and links to all things left handed bowler related. You subscribe to Harold Fernberger's Southpaw Strike email newsletter and vow to return to his site often, since he adds new information every week. What just happened? Before you made this discovery, the name Harold Fernberger meant nothing to you. It was just another name in a sea of names. Before you stumbled upon his site, the topic of left-handed bowlers gave you no reference points or associations. It brought up a blank screen in your mind. Once you found his site, the two things, the name and the specialty, were not only connected, they were welded together in your brain. The next time you go looking for information on lefties who wear those funny shoes, you'll most likely head straight to Harold's site or use the keywords Harold Fernberger in a search. That's the difference between fuzzy branding and having your name and identity sharply in focus. Questions and Action Steps Grab a notebook and write down answers to these questions. What's the hook you can hang your branding hat on? What is different about what you do? Or what aspect of what you do could you emphasize and make part of your public identity? All right, there you go. That's an excerpt from the audiobook called Branding Yourself Online. The subtitle of that new version is 10 Steps to Creating a Potent Personal Brand Identity on the Internet. And yes, it's available on Amazon, on Audible, and on iTunes uh, as an audiobook. And you can get it as a ebook on Amazon in like 12 or 13 countries. I think the audio version may only be available in the U.S. I'm not quite sure, but I know the ebook is available in like, yeah, 13 countries. Oh, and by the way, I probably should have mentioned it in the chapter, but that whole thing that I did about Harold Fernberger, I didn't mention <laughs> I made that person up just as an example. So I have a feeling a lot of people are actually going to be searching for Harold Fernberger looking for the, uh, the left paw uh, bowler, but he doesn't actually exist. But I think it was a fun little story to tell, don't you think? All right, I bet you're itching to find out what the most popular episodes were of The Creative Entrepreneur. And over the course of uh, 12 months or so, uh, the audio podcast had a total of more than 26,000 downloads. That's nice. I mean, there are a lot of podcasts that do more, certainly a lot that do less, uh, but those are respectable numbers. The number one most popular or most downloaded audio podcast was my interview with Derek Sivers. With 997 downloads, of course, he was the founder of CD Baby and uh, quite a, a high-profile entrepreneur and a very cool and interesting guy. Second was my very last feature in the 30 Ways to Become an Empowered Artist thing. That's a mouthful, isn't it? It was called My Best Advice for Long-Term Creative Success and Bloopers. That had 935 downloads. In third place was my interview with Dan Miller, a really cool guy. I uh, wrote a book uh, called 48 Days to the Work You Love and has built an entire empire around that concept. He had 652 downloads. Next up was my interview with Jack Conti of the uh, musical duo Pomplamoose and also a co-founder of Patreon, a new sort of micro crowdfunding uh, site that's been in the news a lot. He had 626 downloads, followed by my interview with Carrie Cole, a uh, vocal coach and sort of a creative entrepreneurial woman in her own right, 549 downloads. And then behind her with 547 downloads was my interview with Pat Flynn of Smart Passive Income fame. So there you have it. I'm back with season two of The Creative Entrepreneur. I'm going to be shaking things up. I'm not going to tell you a definite publication schedule because I'm trying to figure that out. I would like to do them more often. Boy, it'd be great to do weekly, maybe two, even three times a week. Let's see how that goes. But I would love your input. What would you like to see and hear on The Creative Entrepreneur? Uh, feel free to send me uh, an email at bob at bob-baker.com, bob at bob-baker.com. 
You can also leave me a digital voicemail message that I could actually play on the show if I use your question or comment. You can do that at Speak Pipe. That's S P E A K P I P E SpeakPipe dot com slash Mister Buzz Factor, and that Mister is M R Buzz Factor. So that explains that. Okay, this has been great to be back in your ears with season two. I hope you enjoyed it. And look for more inspiration from the creative entrepreneur coming up right around the corner. Hope you're having a great day. Take care. This is Bob Baker saying so long for now.